topic now is the overall impact of ICTs and you're with Jenny and Dylan. Hi, Hi. Dylan. Hello. Thanks for joining us. Pleasure. Now, speaking from a personal point of view, mm -hmm. just for a while, what would you not be able to do if you didn't have computers in your life and if you didn't have good overall computing skills? Sure. There's very little that I could, <laughs> could that I could do without computers. Um, I think to start off with, I couldn't do my job no. without computers. The, the, well, when I don't have a computer, pretty much my productivity stops because almost all of what I do requires a computer and an internet connection. Like. That's just the kind of work that I that I mm -hmm. that I do um, because so much. So much of what I do is about um, writing and about connecting with people and about communicating with people sometimes around the world. And all of those things are just not possible without, without computers. At a kind of more home-based personal level, well, I couldn't watch all my favorite TV programs without a computer. You watch TV on your computer? I don't have a TV in the traditional sense of the word. All the TV that we watch is on computer. Um, I couldn't listen to my favorite music. We don't have a traditional tape or even CD player in the house. Everything is on iPads uh, and iPods and those kinds of devices. Um, and perhaps even more personally, I, I couldn't communicate with my parents. My mom lives in Germany, my dad lives in England, and so computers provide that ability for me to keep touch with with my folks. How overseas. do you do that? Well, we Skype. Okay. And one of the reasons that we Skype as opposed to using the traditional telephone is A, it's a lot cheaper, but B, you get a far more immersive experience. You get to see them. Uh, and particularly as someone with young children, it's really important to me that my parents get to see my kids and as young children, they're able to start to build that kind of relationship with their grandparents, not just by hearing them on the phone, but by actually seeing them on screen and being able to show them the, the pretty picture that they made at school. Mm, so, definitely, yeah. so from all of those points of view, I think my life would be a lot poorer and a lot more <clears throat> unidimensional, yes. put it that way, without computers. So you really don't want to even go on holiday? without some of your computing devices? Not really quite saying that, because I think that there is a balance. And I think it's important to find that balance for yourself. That um, there, there, there can be a tendency, and it's really easy to slip into this, for computers to take over and for mm. technology to take over mm. and for the power dynamic in that relationship to change. So one of the things that I tr I'm not sure that I always get this right, but one of the things I try and do is to make sure that I remain the master and the computer remains the slave. The servant. The servant, <laughs> rather than <laughs> the other way around. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, that actually relates to some of the other questions that mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you. Um, for example, do you think that access to a computer makes one's life easier? Um, and if so, how? I think you've started to answer that in quite a, a large way already. Perhaps. Um, but I think absolutely computers do make our lives easier in a lot of ways. If they didn't, we wouldn't all be hankering after them um, with such fervor. And we wouldn't be selling as many computers as we are around mm. the world. And, and, and when mm. I say computers, I'm not just talking about the traditional tower on your desktop. I'm talking about all computing devices. And, and as, as we've, touched, uh, we've touched on a, a couple of ways in which they make your, your lives easier. Um, but I think they certainly do bring added dimensions and allow you to do things that you couldn't do without them, L like talking to parents overseas, like in my case, actually doing my job. Um, my, my wife's a teacher, and, and she uses technology in her job as well. We also use technology at home um, in terms of, of, of supplementing the instruction and the education that our kids get at school. Yes. 
they're not always going to be able to get everything that we want them to have there, but now we've got the means to be able to introduce other kinds of education into the home and just keep that learning environment going way past the end of the school day as well. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Now, also related to that answer, um, much has been made of the fact that there's almost kind of constant on yes. button, yes. constant communication, constant connectedness. Yes. What's your comment on that? Hmm. I think it depends on the kind of balance that you want to strike for yourself. Um, I know many people who pride themselves on the fact that they are always accessible, that they're always on, that they're always working. And for them, they, they tend to wear that as almost a, a badge of honor. Mm. And that, it might be great for them and, and they might build on a, a lot of their self-esteem into that. Um, and possibly that's a trap that I fall into as well on occasion. But I am also aware of the fact that there is more to life than what you get through computers. And I think that there's a danger often of us thinking that our life can be reduced to what's on my phone. Mm. When it can't be. Where human relationships, actually spending face-to-face -face time with people is sometimes equally, if not more important. And I'm not just talking from a personal perspective of family life, I'm also talking from a, from a work perspective as well. Sometimes that ability to physically connect with somebody over coffee, in a meeting, over lunch, or whatever it might be, is invaluable and a lot more valuable than simply communicating over email or, or even Skype. Because there's so much that we say with mm. our bodies that is lost when you're only communicating with technology. And so I think for yourself, you need to strike that balance of when am I available mm. and when am I not available. And that's about choice. And that's absolutely and, about And choice. about making a considered decision, a carefully balancing out. Absolutely. When do I need to get up from my desk and go and discuss something? When do I need to send an email? Yes. Uh, when do I need to switch the things off at home? Yes. When do we need to allow the kids to play on their gadgets? Absolutely, absolutely. And Ab that brings me to a question about family life. Mm -hmm. Do you think family life is hindered or benefited by the presence of some electronic gadgets, computing devices, etc.? I think the same general principle that we've been talking about applies. There is no yes, no black, white answer. Um, technology is a tool. And we can use the tool to help us, or we can use the tool to hurt us. I know in, in my family, technology is, in a sense, kind of kept at bay, particularly with, with small kids. Small ones. They get half an hour screen time a day. Mm. They can choose what screen it is. It's, it's the computer, it's the tablet, maybe it's the phone, but it's half an hour. Mm. The rest of the time, and particularly, we're really strong with this, over meals, there's no technology. We're, we're having supper together. Mm. It's time to talk <laughs> face to face, get the gadgets out of, yes. of, of the way. And for us, that's been a very deliberate decision. And it's something that we, we have to continually reinforce. A, a, lo a lot of this is almost like running on a treadmill. If you keep running, you can keep your decisions in place. Um, but I think if you stop running, if you stop being deliberate, there's just this, this natural tendency for technology to just take over mm. and infuse itself into every part of your life in ways that are helpful, but I think also in ways that are hurtful and mm. damaging to human relationships. Mm. And, and there's an old saying that very few people on their deathbed look up at their dear wife and say, oh, I wish I spent more time at work. <laughs> Often the regret is, I wish I spent more time with the people that matter to mm. me. Uh, and, and so I think in all of this, make sure that the technology is serving your best interests, not the other way around. Not the other way yeah. around. I think that's a good way to end this topic. Um, I think we've seen that it's about 
making careful choices, mm. using your technologies beneficially, yes, deciding which ones you want to use and when you want to use them. Thank you so much for joining us.